I learned resourcefulness, stubborn persistence, inventiveness, humor, and dogged determination. I learned to insist on doing everything in my power to expect, demand, and require the best quality of life I could muster. Yeah. I learned that you only have to get up one more time than you fall down. You're going to make me look like J.L.O.? <laughs> J Lo. <laughs> Why not? Sure. <laughs> You're gonna have a wish? <laughs> Go for it. The elevator speech. It's a genetic muscle wasting disease created by a, a, a genetic anomaly which causes a toxin to be produced in the body uh, that primarily affects voluntary skeletal muscles and progresses. It radiates the face. Fazio scapula, which is the shoulders, the winging shoulders, the, the, the loss of support of the shoulder blades. But it does radiate down through the core, the belly, the girdle, and then ultimately down through the legs. What does that mean? What it, how does that translate into everyday life? The best way to put it is to give examples, such as uh, inability to even reach, t scratch the top of your head. I can't raise my arms above my elbow height. Uh, difficulty brushing your teeth, getting dressed, uh, you know, pants, underwear, it's difficult to pull them up. Uh, I know it's a little uh, uh, intimate I'm getting, but you know, these are facts of life when you have a, a disability. Yes, it affects mobility severely, and I do use a wheelchair outside, but when I'm walking with a walker, a common comment is, well, at least you're still standing. And to me, the mobility, although terrible, is the least of the disability. It's the upper body uh, inability to do functions of everyday life. Um, and then there's physical injuries from falling, from lack of muscular support to the joints that I'm struggling with. I've gone through knee replacements and spinal fusions and looking perhaps near, near future at a, a hip replacements. For a lot of FSHers, it affects the facial muscles so severely. The inability to smile um, is a terrible toll on social interactions because people judge other people spontaneously by their facial and constantly telling people, why are you so angry? When in fact, they're not. It's just that they can't, aren't able to uh, display emotions in their face. FSH has been in my family for at least four generations that we know of. Uh, through my great-grandmother, grandparent, father, down the line through me, 50% inheritance ratio on the type I have, which is FSHD1. Growing up, uh, we did not know I had it. So I was relatively an able-bodied child, and I got to see the disease from that perspective as my father got worse and worse. I've always said it's more of a family affair because even the non-affected are affected by the disease. We all have the disease in the family. I was severely uh, upset as a child by his disease. And, and my remembrances were of him as he got worse, uh, the negatives, as he started falling. We became the, his caregivers. We would mow the lawn, we did the electrical, we did all the things around the house that uh, traditionally is thought of as, as the male role today. Of course, things have changed. <laughs> it doesn't apply anymore, but when I was growing up, that was how it was, but not in my household. It was a different way of growing up than my friends. I did not feel my household was the same as theirs. I became a very rebellious teenager. Uh, I felt anger, and I think I turned that anger inward because if he was working so hard at this and I was resentful, that I must be a bad person. And then when I was 17, it began to display in my right shoulder first. What have I had to give up in life? It's just a, a never-ending slide. I try not to think of it as giving up. I try to think of it as, as, as adaptation. Um, I was a, a very successful insurance agent 
uh, until I could no longer do the uh, rigors of, of traveling and going to people's homes. And I'm a competitive person by nature. And I was playing 18 holes and I had a respectable handicap for, for a duffer. And uh, slowly but surely, as I got weaker and weaker, I had to modify that until eventually I had to give up the game. And that broke my heart. Uh, loving to be out there, loving to be physical. Uh, so I decided at that point, I better find another avocation to keep me busy. And I took up painting only about 15 years ago. I'm unable to actually hold a brush in my hand any longer. I'd love to get back to painting again. I kept my studio. I keep thinking I'm going to go back to it. I'm trying to figure out adaptations again, reinvent myself. But to date, I have become too difficult to continue with that. Most of the time, uh, my nature is to, to uh, overcome, to find adaptations, to stay positive. Um, I just said I might as well embrace it uh, rather than deny it. Uh, I find it a healthier way to, 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 to approach. Is I like to meet th things head on. I want to know what I'm up against. Uh, I want to know what the odds are. I want to know what to expect or the different variations of what to expect. But, you know, it takes a toll. Uh, emotionally uh, on, on all of us. Uh, it's a constant grieving process. Keep getting up the next morning and yeah, you go through the grief, um, you have your little pity parties, but I refuse to stay there. And the next day I get up and I try to reinvent. I always say this whenever I, I have a conversation about uh, a progressive disease, we are all at a different stage of the disease and not all of us will get as severe. So when you're in your 20s, and this was, and I lived through this fear, uh, assuming that I would be as bad as my father was, and thank God I was not, um, that you don't necessarily will progress to the severity of someone else you're seeing with the disease. There's a lot of fear in that. They don't even want to meet me because they don't even want to know what the disease could become. They don't want to see it. You need to respect the person where they're at at the time, and, and, and some people just cannot handle it and it would be more detrimental. And I know people that have actually gone down the dark rabbit hole of drugs and alcohol because they just cannot accept it and do not want to be informed about it. But doing that still doesn't help because they always have that fear and that's actually what's driving them anyway. So whether or not you're informed, you're still being shaped by the fear of the disease. I've been involved with looking for treatments uh, or, or things to do to help since I'm 25 years old and I'm now 70. So it's frustrating. Decades and decades of hope. And there is nothing. There is really no medication other than pain meds. So there's all kinds of things you can do to try to uh, uh, adapt and I will do anything that I can to uh, provide quality of life for myself. I have a chairlift so that I can remain in my home that I love for 20 years. I have elevated toilet seats. I have elevated seating. Um, I have little uh, utensils that, that will allow me to, to elevate to get the food to my mouth. What's exciting now more than ever, um, and I say near horizon, like in the next five years, is there were roughly, that I know of, at least two dozen 
clinical trials coming to fore. So they're, they're getting to the point where they're really understanding the molecular and biological mechanisms to interfere with the uh, mischief that this, this toxin is producing. With technology today, I in my bones know, maybe not in my lifetime, but I, my bones know that those 20, 30 year olds or their future children, there's gonna be some kind of a treatment or cure. So to not face it and, and not put yourself in clinical trials and not be available for the testing for yourself and your future children would be a shame. God willing, I live long enough to see that treatment or cure. The committee is excited to announce that this year's Community Hero Award goes to Amy Beckier. In my giving to the community, I get back more. I've met people that I never would have come across, and I've fallen in love with the uh, FSHD community and the people, and they're just quite a dynamic group of people that really are just amazing, who I never would have had the, 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 the opportunity to have met. People gravitate towards me because of the experience and because of the fact that I try to be forthright about it and, and uh, help them emotionally navigate which I think is actually even more important than the physical. Because once you can emotionally come to terms, then anything is possible.